This is Twit. Let's talk about AI. AI is uh, all the rage these days. In fact, Microsoft actually they kind of they kind of misled people. They announced they have a new <laughs> thing they're doing uh, when they update Windows. They call it a moment. And Moment 2 came out yesterday, and they said that it would bring AI-powered Bing to Windows 11. Not really. What it does is it puts nope. a logo on your Windows 11 taskbar that when no. you click it, opens up Edge and the Bing chat. So they gave you a shortcut. Or an ad. <laughs> or an ad. Or an yeah, ad. Right. <laughs> let's, let's call a spade a spade. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. an ad. Oh, boy. Uh, see, That's not there's a feature. Yeah, here's the. If you look at it in the in the little search pill, we call it. There's a B. When you click it, it says introducing the new Bing. But if you want to do anything, it has to open up Edge and. You do can't it. just use that little search bar. No. And plug it in there. No. See, that would be an integrated. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing. There's no approach. reason they didn't do that, except they want to. This push. is all performance. It's Microsoft yeah. is playing a game here. Yeah. Well, Microsoft was sure, sure touted there in the beginning as having d made a really smart move with this whole chat GPT thing. These reporters are idiots. We're a couple of weeks away from that now. Has that proven to be the case? I mean, Google didn't, you know, initially. I mean, they, they had they their still bar, haven't. They had their bar thing, but, but, they, but, but they it's not out there. It. Yeah. And that's and turned out to actually smart. be kind of a good thing by comparison, yeah. right? Um, Jason, in, in, in the um, the annex, in the kitty table part of the rundown, I put in two <laughs> stories that was, was interesting to me, that, that there's already a tech lash against OpenAI now. Oh, yeah. Well, right. so, and, so and that's Vice kind says, of reasonable because OpenAI, which yeah. was a, funded in 2015, partly by Elon Musk, who parted company with them a few years later, to be a response to the closed source development of AI by Microsoft and Google and others. It was to be the open one, the nonprofit one, but it's no longer that. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not nonprofit mm. anymore. Yeah, uh, so this is a motherboard ar article. Yeah. Open AI is now everything it promised not to be: corporate, closed source, and for profit. Hmm. True, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, they now this to me is a little nerve wracking. Sam Altman at CEO wrote a blog post this week planning for AGI and beyond. AGI is the scary AI, the general intelligence, which would essentially be, as he says, our mission is to ensure that artificial and general intelligence, AI systems that are generally smarter than humans, benefits all of humanity. If AGI is successfully created, well, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We don't have AGI. I think that's pretty clear. But Blake Lemoyne and, and, and his ilk uh, notwithstanding, it's not sentient. No. No. It's not as smart as a human. It sounds like it is. I once asked uh, Ray Kurzweil, who was kind of the king of all of the singularity, right? He said it's sometime in, in the next 20 years. He said, I think by 2035. Uh, their computers will be in. Now, this is his key phrase: indistinguishable from humans. And I said, "Well, but what? But will they be thinking?" And he says, "Doesn't matter if you can't tell the difference. They're indistinguishable from humans. That's that's it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It's foolish to say. Well, are they thinking? That's not. If you can't tell, does it matter? I don't know if Jason's thinking. Right. Well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, well, but but what is but what is thinking to a computer? I mean, any any operation that is determined by a computer is in essence thinking, right? Not as we think. Not as we think of thinking. But when I think of, yeah, this it's is getting weird. When I think of thinking, yeah, it's thinking. <laughs> I think yeah. of you know, I want this thing to happen. I have to understand it. I have to figure out. I have to know how to uh, how to do this thing or whatever. That's what a computer does when it's when it's you know performing an action. So I it's mean, a type of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. That's Ray's point. Exactly. Yeah. Kurzweil said, if you can't tell the difference, it doesn't right. matter what the internal process is. Right. If the result is the same. Um, now, the real singularity comes when, and this is where it gets scary, when AGI can design better AGI or can build better machines. Can build a better version of itself. Then they're faster than humans. Mm. It, it becomes iterative and it gets faster and faster, accelerates to the point where... 
you know, the, I don't know what, I don't know what, yeah, what is, is. The what sky's is the limit. Yeah. In other words, right now we're holding it back. Mm -hmm. But as soon as it can pesky do it. Pesky humans. Pesky humans. As soon as it can do it itself, nothing to stop it. A machine that can design machines, I don't know what, takes over the universe. Yeah. So uh, we can imagine a world in which humanity flourishes to a degree that it's probably impossible for any of us to fully visualize it yet. We hope to contribute to the world, says Altman, an AGI aligned with such <laughs> flourishing. And if not, well, we try. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <Wow>. really? <laughs> the first AGI will just be a point along the continuum of intelligence. We think it's likely progress will continue from there. Yeah, see, that's what scares me. Possibly sustaining the rate of progress we've seen over the past decade for a long period of time. Or, he doesn't say, or faster. If this is true, the world could become extremely different from how it is today, and the risks could be extraordinary. A misaligned, super-intelligent AGI could cause grievous harm to the world. An autocratic regime with a decisive super-intelligence lead could do that as well. Yikes! Hmm. So what are they doing to prevent that? No, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. We think a slower takeoff is easier to make safe and coordination among AGI efforts to slow down at critical junctures will likely be important, even in a world where we don't need to do this to solve technical alignment problems. Slowing down may be important to give society enough time to adapt. So, so, so right. don't be in such a hurry. Successfully transitioning to a world with super intelligence, I should add non-human super intelligence, is perhaps the most important and hopeful and scary project in human history. Success is far from guaranteed, and the stakes, boundless downside and boundless upside, will hopefully unite all of us. But he, he's not hopefully. really all he's saying is slow down. Uh, he's not really giving us any tools. He's also out there saying, we, this was in last week too, it was in the rundown last week where he's saying, regulate us so we don't have to make the decisions, you make them for us. Yeah, that's not... Um, Kevin Marks and I are both in the in the rundown, uh, invading the rundown. Hi, Kevin. Oh, um, oh hi, Kevin. Emily Bender. We invited him Emily on, but Bender. I think it was such short notice that he couldn't probably couldn't get in. Yeah, I just, I just got an email from him. Yeah. With so him. Emily Bender, who was one of the Stochastic Parrots paper authors, co-authors, has a thread which is in there in which she's tearing apart all. Uh, she's amazing on 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 her ongoing comments on the hype of of AI. But she has been a naysayer. It's fair to oh, say. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, just just a naysayer mainly of the hype, mainly of the overpromise. Um, and uh, so this is so her she, reaction to Sam's post. Yes, this piece, yes. Uh, from the get-go, this is just gross. <laughs> they think they're really in the business of developing, shaping AGI, and they think are they are positioned to decide what benefits all of humanity. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, uh, where's her? I don't understand. That's the next one. How does this Twitter work? To get some, yeah. That's not Twitter. Either. It's Mastodon. How, Shush. Oh, how does Mastodon there, That's work? her next post. That's right. that right there. Where you're, That's her next post. Then Altman invites then the reader Altman. to imagine that AGI, if successfully created, is literally magic. Also, what does turbocharging the economy mean if there's already abundance? More dollars for the super rich has to be. Also note the rhetorical hmm. sleight of hand here. Paragraph one has AGI as a hypothetical. But by paragraph two, it's already something that has potential. <laughs> but oh no, the magical imagined AGI also has downsides. But it's also so, so tempting and important to create that we cannot not create it. Note yeah. the next yeah. rhetorical sleight of hand here. Now AGI is an unpreventable future. That's the essence of what she said. It's a really good post. <sighs> I, I think I'm following Ms. Bender. But if not, I'm going to follow you her. Should she's she's brilliant? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I am following her. Uh, you this know is what? the problem, Mastodon. You can't you can't try to switch yeah. over from one page to nope. another. It's already, hard to already see. following her. Uh, okay. Well, if actually if I'd been following it uh, as a follower as opposed to um, in that form, I could see it a little bit better. But yeah, uh, yeah. she's a professor of linguistics uh, at UW University of Washington. She runs the Master of Science in Computational Linguistics program. So she knows what she's talking about. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. But yeah. And again, she was co-author with Tim Gebru and Margaret Schmitchell, uh, and one other whose name I forget, the fourth Beatle, fifth Beatle, uh, of the Stochastic Parents paper. Right. Warning of this. So what? Yeah, I mean, this is a good question. Uh, I mean, talk about big tech. Um, it's kind of like a, a nuclear proliferation. We're yeah. in we're <laughs> in the era of uh, AI proliferation, and there's nobody nobody talking about disarmament. But here too to talk about we must regulate this now. We don't know what it is. Well, you can't. Re yeah, I guess you can't. But what do you do then? Right. If you can't regulate it, what do you do? You 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 educate people. You be cautious. You keep people accountable. You do what what Emily Bender is doing, and 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 mock them when they're going overboard. Yeah. Uh, you, that's what society does. I mean, but what is being cautious? Because there's going to be a lot of companies that ha that see the potent the upside of getting into AI, and their bottom line is to make money. So, like, where, yep. like, how, you how don't can do we expect Microsoft them did. to draw the line of what caution is? Because right. they're, well, they're probably going to push didn't. it. Right. Microsoft threw caution to the wind. Google um, almost did, but then held back and said, no, we're the cautious ones. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you love all things Android, well, I've got a show for you to check out. It's called All About Android, and I'll give you three guesses what we talk about. We talk about Android, the latest news, hardware, apps. We answer feedback. It's me, Jason Howell, Ron Richards, Win Twit Dow, and a whole cast of awesome characters talking about the operating system that we love. You can find All About Android at twit.tv slash AAA.